Hello everyone, I am Daniel and I'll be presenting you our work on a new method to measure excitation and inhibition at the same time. As a br brief background, the interplay between excitatory and inhibitory synaptic inputs orchestrates neuronal activity. Current methods can measure either excitatory or inhibitory conductances, but not both. We present a new method to measure excitatory and inhibitory conductances simultaneously by current clamp recordings. Our method is completely analytical and does not rely on assumptions regarding the dynamics or statistics of the inputs. This slide illustrates the concept of the method, where if we take the membrane equation, which is not shown on this slide, we can rearrange it such that GE, the excitatory conductance, is on the left and that means if we know everything on the right hand side of this equation, we have effectively isolated the excitatory conductance. Furthermore, because we assume that GS, the total conductance, is simply the sum of the excitatory and the inhibitory conductance, if we had know GS and GE, we have also isolated the inhibitory conductance. So this means if we know the voltage at time t, the total conductance at time t, the leak conductance, the voltage at the difference between the voltage at time t and the equilibrium potential of the leak conductance, the excitatory conductance and the inhibitory conductance, the current we are injecting during current clamp, and finally the, uh, the membrane capacitance of the cell, if we know all of these, we also know GE and GI. So most of the things on the right here are pretty easy to measure during a standard current clamp recording. So the real issue becomes how do we measure the voltage as well as the total conductance at the same time. This is kind of illustrated here where we have GE and GI, uh, GE in, being in green and GI in red and we really don't know um, both of those quantities but if we measure the, um, the membrane potential as well as the total conductance that has caused those membrane potential changes, we have uh, isolated GE and GI. And it turns out one of the ways to achieve this, to measure both membrane potential and total conductance is, is through impedance analysis. And this slide shows the, uh, essentially uh, almost the whole procedure of the method, where on the left we again have the unknown quantities GE and GI, but we can, during an experiment, we can record the voltage and we can do that while we are injecting uh, alternating current. This alternating current looks like this because it's the sum of two um, of sinusoidal waveforms of two frequencies, F1 and F2, and those are very high frequencies, so um, that's why this um, plot essentially looks like a big block. However, these um, sinusoidal waveforms cause these fluctuations in membrane potential. And to uh, then get a cleaned version of the voltage that, uh, look, that, is, um, that represents the voltage that we would have recorded if we hadn't injected, these alternating currents, we can band stop filter around F1 and F2 and get the clean voltage later. However, we can of course also band pass filter around F1 and F2. And what we get then uh, is these kind, of, um, these kind of waveforms and if we take the envelope of those, we see um, we get the impedance. Now to get from the impedance to the total conductance, we can use this kind of equation down here, which describes the, um, the impedance at a frequency F for this kind of rather simple um, RC circuit. And we can rearrange this formula such that we have GT on the left. And from that, we, uh, and having two frequencies, we can um, isolate the total conductance. Now with the clean voltage and the total conductance, as I showed on the previous slide, we can calculate GE and GI. And as you can see, this unknown quantity, we have almost perfectly isolated. The me our measured result in this simulation 
looks almost identical to the ground truth conductances. What we also did was to check how our method performs if the conductances are um, distributed on synapses. So if we simulate a neuron that has dendr dendritic morphology. So here we place the synapses at intermediate distance and we see that our uh, method in blue follows very well the um, the timing of the true conductances and it also performs at least as well as what we would have measured with voltage clamp as we can see here in uh, darker orange. Now when we distribute the synapses with some of them being uh, very distal, very far away from the soma, we can still, um, our the signal we measure is still highly correlated with the true conductance, uh, slightly underestimates the, absolute, the magnitude though compared to voltage clamp. However, it still follows very reliably the ground truth conductance. We have now also moved on to proof of principle recordings in vitro. And here you can see in the top left a voltage recording with the um, uh, alternating current injection. And we can clean this up by band stop filtering as I explained earlier. And then we get this kind of voltage signal. And here in blue, you can see optogenetic stimulus triggers that cause these membrane fluctuations. Now on the right, you see the in green the excitatory conductance as well as the inhibitory conductance and the um, this darker one here fr measured is the um, the conductance that we isolated with our new method compared to the voltage clamp here and there are some things we can see here where our method follows extremely reliably both the magnitude and the, the time course of the um, of the conductance as measured with the voltage clamp. With that, I want to finish and I want to especially highlight Ben Title, who has done these recordings that I just showed you and has done an excellent job of figuring out some of the technical details, as well as Ilan Lampel, who had the initial idea for this project. And with that, I'm out of time and I thank you for your attention.